In this video, I'm going to be talking about the Doppler effect. What is it? How does it work? And how do you solve a Doppler problem? So first of all, let's take a look at what the Doppler effect is. It's the apparent change in frequency due to the motion of the source or the observer. So although the actual frequency or pitch of the source doesn't change, what is observed or heard by um, someone can change based on the motion of either the source moving or the person moving. So basically the way sound works is if it is stationary, then if you take a look at each one of these rings here, it's basically a single sound wave. So as a source vibrates back and forth, it makes a high pressure region and then a low pressure region following it. So you can consider these parts where the rings are at, high pressure regions, and then the white areas in between them, low pressure regions that vibrate the eardrum. So typically these sound waves travel at around 343 meters per second to your ear and they hit your ear as frequently as the source vibrates. Now, if that object or you start approaching each other, then that distance becomes progressively shorter, causing those sound waves to hit your ear more frequently because they have to travel a shorter distance. So in this case over here, where the sound wave is moving towards the observer, as you can see, the sound waves are starting to get bunched together because as you move closer and closer and start sending out those same sound waves, they have to travel that shorter distance causing a smaller wavelength and a higher frequency. So for each of the observers in both of these pictures, I labeled what would happen to the wavelength, which is represented by the Greek letter lambda, the frequency, and whatever happens to the frequency happens to the pitch. So as I said before, if either the observer or the sound source are moving closer towards each other, that starts to create a smaller wavelength because they start bunching up as it approaches. Um, and then that makes the sound waves hit the eardrum more frequently and then the observed pitch by the observer is going to be higher. So in this case, the source is moving in on the observer. So that causes a observed frequency that is higher. And in this case, in, as opposed to the actual source moving, the person is moving towards those sound waves. So if you're running closer and closer to the sound waves, they're going to start bumping to your ear more frequently, hence causing a higher pitch to be heard. Okay. And then everything other way around as the person moves away from the sound source, they're going to get farther and farther, and then those sound waves are going to hit their eardrum less frequently, creating a lower pitch being heard and larger wavelengths striking their ear. And then same with the dog over here, where the sound source is moving to the left, is moving away from it. And as it travels farther and farther to shoot these sound waves towards the right, it's going to take a little bit longer for them to strike the ear, striking them less frequently, and that lower frequency relates to that lower pitch being heard. So now that we know what the Doppler effect is and how it works, let's take a look at a couple examples. So we have one example where an ambulance is moving towards a girl, and then we have another one where two, both of the objects are moving, a dog is chasing a car that's driving. So let's go ahead and label everything in this formula first before we work these two problems out. 
if you take a look at our formula, we have um, F prime here, which is the observed frequency. We have just plain F, um, which is the actual frequency of the sound source. Um, both of these Vs are the same. Those are the velocity of sound. And then you have um, the velocity of the observer, the person listening to the sound, and you have Vs, the velocity of the sound source. Okay, so the way to look at it is you basically have a ratio that's going to be set up here that you're multiplying by the actual frequency that's going to cause that actual frequency to become greater or smaller based on what number you're multiplying um, this F by, and that's going to create it your observed frequency. So if we're taking a look at our first um, problem over here, it says an ambulance is driving towards a girl at 10 meters per second. The ambulance is generating a 400 hertz sound. What is the observed frequency of the girl if she's at rest? So we're going to go ahead and draw a picture first before we start plugging in some numbers. So the first thing you want to do is go ahead and draw a picture and label all of the variables and arrows of everything that you know before you start plugging into the formula. Now the way to approach this formula is deciding what's going to happen to the frequency and then um, adjust these numbers accordingly so they give you the correct answer. Okay, So what I mean by that is based on the ideas we talked about before, we have the sound source approaching the girl which means that if they're, it's approaching the girl and that distance is becoming smaller and smaller, those sound waves are gonna hit the girl more frequently. So we should um, expect a higher frequency for our final answer, because they say, what is the observed frequency of the girl? So we're looking for this right here. Okay, so although the sound source itself is making a 400 hertz sound, she is gonna hear a sound that is slightly above 400. So we're gonna go ahead and write in our F, We know the speed of sound is 343 because it's written right over here. And then we have to decide if we're going to add or subtract the velocity of the source and the velocity of the observer. So for the velocity of the observer, that doesn't really matter because it's zero. Um, but we, now we have to decide if we're going to add or subtract to the velocity of 10 meters per second, which is the velocity of the source. Okay, now this works a little bit differently than a lot of physics problems. A lot of physics problems, you can say everything forward is positive, everything backwards is negative, or everything up is positive and everything down is negative. Now for this one, you have to analyze it mathematically and decide what's gonna happen to your frequency. So we know that our actual frequency is 400 Hertz and we already pre-decided based on the Doppler concepts that if something is approaching, we need to multiply this 400 by a number to make it a little bit greater because she's gonna hear a higher frequency as the ambulance is approaching. So if you think about a fraction mathematically, we would wanna make the denominator smaller in order to make a bigger number. So we are going to subtract 10 as opposed to adding it. So then we're gonna go ahead and uh, do a couple steps of math and then go ahead and solve for our final solution. So I finished with an answer of 412 hertz, which does make sense because it's above 400 and it's only slightly above because that velocity of 10 meters per second isn't too dramatic. So if we have something approaching the person, then we're gonna make sure we subtract that velocity. So as I said, you have to analyze this fraction mathematically and think about what's gonna happen to your frequency. So if the ambulance is um, approaching the girl, we want to make the denominator smaller so that the overall ratio is larger. And then when you multiply that larger number by 400, it increases it. Okay, now let's take a look at our second one. We have a dog that is chasing after a car driving at five meters per second as it drives away. 
The car is honking a horn, a 300 hertz horn, but the dog hears 305 hertz. How fast is the dog running? So this situation is a little bit more complicated. So let's go ahead and draw our picture and set everything up before we discuss the details of how we're gonna plug in each of the numbers. All right, so this problem is gonna be a little bit tougher conceptually and mathematically. So we have F prime over here, which is the observed frequency. So we do already know that number. The dog hears a frequency of 305 Hertz. And then this question is gonna be taking off this question where the velocity of sound is 343. And then we have the actual frequency of the sound source, which is 300 Hertz. Okay. So again, we have to decide, um, what each of the velocities is doing to the frequency and then add or subtract them to these 343s to get the result that we're looking for. So if the car is driving away from the dog at five meters per second, it's trying to make that distance greater. So if it's trying to make that distance greater, that means it's going to decrease the frequency because it's moving away from the person hearing it, causing those sound waves to hit their ear less frequently. So that is the velocity of the source, okay? So the velocity of the source, we wanna take care of this five meters per second and do something mathematically to this 343 that is gonna decrease our overall answer, which would be adding it. Because if we add that five, then we're dividing by a larger number, which is gonna make this number smaller overall and then decrease our frequency. Okay, now we also have to decide what we wanna do with this unknown V. So we have the velocity of the observer, which is our unknown variable. Now this dog is trying to move closer and closer to this car. So because they're approaching the sound source, they're trying to increase that frequency and get more of those sound waves more frequently by approaching the car. So that would mean that we want to do something to this VO that's going to make this ratio larger when multiplied by the 300, which would be adding. So if you're going to make this whole entire fraction larger, we would want to add more into the numerator to create a larger fraction. So let's go ahead and solve that mathematically and then see what we come up with. All right, for this problem, I had to do three mathematical steps to get my final answer. So what I did is I divided both sides by 300 to cancel out this 300. And then I took this 348 in the denominator and I cross multiplied it up and over. So I have um, this fraction over here, 305 over 300 times 348. And then I was just left with 343 plus my VO. So I subtracted the 343 from both sides and I came up with 10.8 meters per second. So just like I do with all my problems, I make sure I take a look at that number and see if it matches up with the previous information. So the dog hears 305 hertz, which is larger than the original frequency, which means that 
the distance between the dog and the car has to be decreasing. So although the car is driving away and the, and the dog is chasing it, that would mean that the dog's velocity has to be greater than this five meters per second of the car so that it becomes closer and closer to the car, creating a higher frequency and a higher pitch. Okay, which that is true, it's 10.8, it is greater than that five meters per second. So the dog is closing in, getting the sound waves more frequently and increasing that original 300 Hertz frequency to 305. So to recap, if you take a look at each of these scenarios over here, um, these two are fairly similar. If you have the observer or the source um, closing in on each other in any way, then the sound waves hit them more frequently because the wavelengths get shorter and more bunched up therefore causing you to hear a higher pitch. And then when the observer or the source moves away from one another, creating a larger and larger distance, you get bigger wavelengths and you have the sound waves hitting your ear less frequency, causing you to hear a lower pitch. Now, when approaching these Doppler problems, like I said, you have to approach it from a conceptual and a mathematical point of view. So you have to think about how the frequency is gonna be affected and then change your denominator and your numerator appropriately to get the answers that you're looking for. So I hope that was helpful in helping you understand what the Doppler effect is and how to solve a problem. Thanks for watching and listening.